um, I think kind of without further ado, we're, we're right at that mark of the amount of people that registered. So I think we're good to go to start. Um, so I'll just start by introducing myself and talk a little bit about the Loris classroom and then we'll dive right into it, okay? So uh, my name is Alexa and I'm our communications coordinator and today I'm going to be presenting to you on a bunch of really amazing ways that we can celebrate and protect the earth. Um, this is our kind of celebration of Earth Day. Obviously we couldn't do it right on Earth Day because there was a school break so I'm really glad um, that a wonderful teacher let me know that ahead of time that Earth Day was during school break so that we could organize this to have as many students join us as possible and boy have we ever. Um, this is the biggest presentation we've ever given to date and we're just so excited to see so much interest in it. Um, prior to the pandemic, we have this amazing state-of-the-art classroom, which is actually right above me. And typically we would see about 2,000 students there every year. Um, and we're going to have close to 4,000 here today. So I'm just so excited to see you all here and to see this interest in the program. And um, yeah, we're going to learn a lot today. We have lots of really fun things uh, for your students. And it's an all-new presentation. It's different than what you may have seen in the classroom, which I think is really fun. Um, ultimately, there's also probably a lot of you who are here who have taken a virtual recycling classroom tour with me in the last two years. Um, so this presentation kind of builds on that as well as reminds us of the essentials of recycling. Um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, I'm going to get started. So today we are here to learn and celebrate. Um, these are kind of the things that I'm really going to focus on. Um, so number one, recycling, obviously. Um, then we're also gonna talk a little bit about compost. We're gonna talk about waste, garbage. Um, we're gonna talk about upcycling. Um, we're gonna remind you about the poster contest. And then at the end, I will open it up for questions. So uh, the best format for us to collect and answer questions is gonna be through the chat or the Q&A. You're more than welcome to drop questions in there all throughout the presentation. And then at the end, I'm gonna comb through those and answer ones that um, we definitely are seeing repeated or ones that we think are, you know, beneficial for everyone to answer. So yeah, if your students have questions along the way, or if you do, um, please put those in the chat or the Q&A, and uh, we'll get to those at the end. First up is recycling. So it's so important to remember that there are three R's, reduce, reuse, and then recycle, right? We really, I think, focus on recycling when in reality, the most effective ways to protect the earth are by reducing and reusing first. We always wanna make sure that we aren't overusing, overbuying, overthrowing things out, right? So we wanna reduce. And then next step is reuse. You know, Maybe you can find a way to reuse or repurpose something in a way that you maybe hadn't before. This is a really great way to protect the earth. And then lastly, Recycle, right? Um, we're all here because we're passionate about things like recycling and composting. So obviously recycling is a very important part of those three R's. And it's one of the things that we do here every day. So I work out of the recycling facility and here we process about 150 tons of recycling every day. That's the size of a blue whale. It is a massive amount of recycling. So, what do we recycle? Um, this may be a little repetitive if you've been to one of our presentations already, but um, obviously I'd be amiss if I didn't take this opportunity to go over it again. So we have this really great saying here at Loris Recycle to help you remember, and it is think smart, five in the cart. So those five categories are listed here. Number one, paper, newspaper, flyers, old mail, schoolwork, after your parents and gardens, guardians have seen it, <laughs> and shredded paper can all be recycled. Next is cardboard, so flattened cardboard that is no larger than two feet by two feet. Glass, glass is a city of Saskatoon resident only recycling program, mostly just because the risk of it breaking after a really long drive from another city here, really, really gross. Next is plastic. So we accept plastics one through seven. These need to be a rigid plastic with the number one to seven and recycling Mobius on the bottom of it. And then lastly is tin and aluminum. So basically if you got food in it and it's tin or aluminum, it's gonna be recyclable like a soda can or a soup can. And then this bottom point, this one is so, so important. This is probably the most important thing about recycling in general. 
everything that comes here for recycling must be clean, okay? Can't have food waste, can't have juice left in a juice carton, nothing like that. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, um, sometimes, especially when markets are slow, which welcome to COVID, that's happening to everyone, um, things can sit for six months or even a year before they get sent somewhere for recycling. If they have a bunch of food waste in them, they're gonna go moldy and they're gonna ruin and contaminate all the other recycling around them. We really don't wanna see that. Next up, if you had a tuna sandwich and you didn't really rinse out the tuna can and you put it in your bin and maybe your bin isn't fully closed because you got way too much stuff in it and someone's lost cat is looking for a meal and a warm place to sleep, they're gonna smell your tuna can and they're gonna end up in your recycling cart. We don't wanna see that happen. Luckily, cats have nine lives and they do, they do come here and they do jump off the line and they really scare our staff. Um, but every cat that's come here has had a happy ending and found a wonderful home. Um, but we just don't really wanna see that happen again. So it kind of keeps pests and cats and all sorts of stray animals out of your bin. Also, it prevents it from going moldy. So clean recycling. Clean recycling is number one priority. So now this is a question we get asked all the time. What is my stuff actually getting made into? And it's not something we've ever covered in a presentation before, but I wanted to make today extra special for you guys. So we're gonna talk about where some of the materials we send get made into. First up is paper. Paper basically is gonna get shredded down into teeny tiny little bits, have water added to it and turn it into like a pulp and then pressed into a new material. So for us, when we track where our recycling is going from Loris, um, paper is getting recycled into Kleenexes, toilet paper and paper towel. Next is cardboard. So cardboard is also a fiber product, just like paper. So it gets shredded up, gets water added to it, gets turned into like this big cardboard soup kinda, and then it gets pressed into something else. Um, for cardboard, it's basically getting turned into box board or the little corrugated paper that's in between the cardboard layers. Next is plastic. So obviously there are tons of different kinds of plastics. So they're gonna get made into different things. Um, so if it's something solid, like a sour cream container, that's like a heavier plastic, it's going to get melted down and poured into something similar in shape and size. So a sour cream container might get pressed into a cottage cheese container. Um, it's going to get made into something else of that same type of plastic. Something a little thinner, like a clamshell that you would get strawberries or raspberries in, is actually going to get shredded and kind of spun into polyfiber, and it can get made into clothing, which is really cool. You'll find a lot of your clothing is actually made with like a poly blend. That is made from recycled plastics. Next up is tin and aluminum. Uh, metal is very highly recyclable. It can get recycled over and over and over again, which is why it is so important to recycle it. Um, for us, we definitely found when we did some tracking on it that the metals that are coming through us here are getting turned into things like door handles and cell phone parts. Pretty cool, hey? Then lastly is glass. So glass usually will get melted down and made into another type of glass, or if it's broken, it can get ground up into like a sand or a base material and used as road base. So this is something I think we've wanted to share for a long time and haven't had you know, the resources to do the research on it. So I think it's really cool for you guys to be able to see just how important your recycling is to us because of where it is going. So if you have questions, I'd love for you to put them in the chat and the Q&A and I will absolutely get to them at the end. See a few of you raising your hand. Um, I promise I will answer all your questions at the end. And um, Loren is standing by as well. She can kind of facilitate any questions behind the scenes if you have some as well. Absolutely. We've got some great questions coming in. We're very excited to answer them all at the end. Make sure you send them over to that question and answer, the Q&A bubble. Okay. So now why is it so important that we recycle these materials that we have? Well, these materials are made of something called natural resources. These materials like plastic, like metal, like glass, like paper and cardboard, 
actually are given to us by the earth. So we need to make sure that we are recycling them because the earth only has a finite amount of these resources. It's actually been predicted that these resources could stop replenishing in the next 20 to 60 years. That is within your lifetime for sure. So you have to make sure that you're recycling these things because there's not an infinite amount of resources that we can just take and take and take and take from the earth, right? There's only so much take before you have to give back. So finding ways that you can recycle, reduce, and reuse will extend the lifespan of these natural resources, which are so, so important to us. So my next slide is something really cool. It's a video. I know you guys love videos. So now that we've talked about what's recyclable, what it's getting turned into, and what it's made from, natural resources, I'd like to show you just what happens to the recycling when you put it in your cart. So we're going to watch a little virtual tour video, give myself a break to have some water. <laughs> and uh, if it doesn't play right away, just give it a second. Sometimes it needs to load. Welcome to Loris Recycle. We're going to take you through our materials recovery facility or MRF here in Saskatoon and show you just what happens to all the recycling you put in your blue cart. We process 150 tons of material here every single day, which is about the same weight as a blue whale. All of the material is processed at a rate of 20 to 22 tons per hour using specialized machines and hand sorting. Once it's been collected from your neighborhood, we load all of the material onto our conveyor belt using this drum feeder. First stop is pre-sort. This belt is moving at 70 meters per minute. The employees who work here are very fast and accurate at their job. They're looking for a few things, shredded paper, plastic film, garbage, hazardous goods, and glass. Shredded paper should be coming to us in a clear or clear colored bag. These bags get opened up, emptied into the shredded paper bin, while the plastic film bag gets sent up the vacuum tube above. Next, we're looking for household hazardous goods. Sadly, we see a lot of dangerous items here at our facility, such as propane tanks, weapons, needles, and more. When one of these items is seen, the line is stopped for it to be safely removed. These items could hurt one of our employees, so it's so important that you safely dispose of these items and not try to recycle them in your blue bin. Lastly, we're looking for garbage and glass. Both of these items need to be hand-picked off the line here at Pre-Sort. The next few stations are all sorted by size and material. First up is cardboard. Cardboard is the biggest item that we sort. We sort it using OCC cardboard sorting stars. All smaller and heavier items fall through the stars and onto the next station while the larger cardboard floats over top of the stars and then onto a human man quality control station. The next station is paper, which is sorted very similarly to cardboard. We use a slightly smaller set of stars to separate the paper from everything else. We also use a paper magnet to sort out paper from the other materials. This is a belt with tens of thousands of little holes in it and a high powered suction behind it. All the paper sticks to the belt while heavier items fall off. Once again, after it's been through machines, it goes through a manned quality control station. Next up, household tin. We use a ferrous magnet to pull tin cans off of the line. The cans are pulled up out of the materials on the belt below and thrown into a bunker. Lastly, we use our T-Tech optical scanners to help us sort out plastics one through seven and household aluminum. These scanners can sort materials in four to six seconds. They use blasts of air to move the materials onto their appropriate belts. These materials then go on to NAND stations for further sorting and quality control. One of these stations is our deposit line. This is where we collect all the deposit items to be returned to SARCAN, such as glass, plastic, aluminum beverage containers, and Tetra Packs. From the tip floor to material bunkers, the whole material sorting process takes approximately 15 minutes. Once we have enough of one material, we push it onto our floor conveyor belt and send it up into the baler. The materials are compressed, wrapped in wire, and sent out. We produce 150 to 200 bales per day. 
These bales are shipped out across North America to be made into something new. Okay, so that is what happens to your recycling when it comes here to us at Loris Recycle. Like I said before, we process 150 tons of recycling every day, which is about the size of a blue whale. It's a massive amount. In order to sort all of that in one day, we do about 20 to 22 tons per hour, which is about five elephants worth. It is a massive amount of recycling that we process here every day. And one other thing that I love to point out after we watch this video, there's a lot of people in that video, right? It's not just machines that are sorting all of this stuff. It is real people who will put their hands on everything you put in the bin. So it's really important that you stay within that Think Smart five categories in the cart to help keep these folks safe at work. Okay, that is our first part of the presentation the wonderful world of recycling. But there are many ways that we can work together to protect the environment. And another one is composting. Composting is so important. It is a great way to keep food waste out of the landfill. So basically, I'm just gonna kind of talk to you a little bit about our commercial composting facility because it's a little unique to the average backyard composter. And I would just love to show you how it works. So this is a couple photos from our facility. Um, this one here is what the container would look like in the back of a grocery store. So there are a lot of places like the co-op grocery store who have bins like these in their warehouse and anytime food goes bad, they can put it in here and we turn it into this. We turn it into usable compost instead of putting it in the landfill. It is an amazing way to protect the earth. So these are the things that can be composted. So obviously there are some ones that you would think right away like fruit and vegetable scraps. Of course I can compost those. Um, some yard waste, flowers, any kind of like material like this, like um, a cheesy greasy pizza box or a soiled napkin or a coffee filter. These are all things that can easily turn into compost. Now this bottom line is kind of what separates us from the regular backyard composter. Um, these three categories are really cool for us. Basically, we can turn grains like popcorn, pasta, pizza, maybe all those crusts you don't like to eat. We can turn those into soil. And then meat, dairy, and bones. Those can actually be turned into soil, which is so cool. And then solidified dairy as well. So why is it so important to compost? Well, when food waste goes in the garbage and goes to the landfill, it actually does really bad things for the earth. So when it goes to a landfill setting, it has to be covered by soil and um, plastic every night in order to contain all of the stuff in the landfill from blowing away in the wind or from animals getting it. And when that happens, it cuts off all the oxygen to these materials. When that happens, they have to break down in an unnatural way which creates greenhouse gases. So obviously we don't want those. Those are what's causing global warming. So a really good way to kind of just like help you visualize this is if you were to put fruit or veggie waste like a head of lettuce in the landfill, in a landfill setting, it takes up to 25 years for a head of lettuce to break down. And it creates greenhouse gases every day in those 25 years, which are bad for the earth. But if you took that head of lettuce and put it in a compost bin and it came to us, we could turn it into soil in as little as 13 weeks. Amazing, so good for the environment. And you can do this in your, on your own as well. You can have a compost pile in your backyard. Maybe your classroom could have a compost pile out in the schoolyard. Um, it's a really easy way to just keep that food waste out of the landfill. Um, or, you know, if you have a Loris Organics bin and you're able to put these other kinds of proteins and meats and stuff like that in there, it's amazing. It's a great way to protect the earth. And I have another video. I know you guys love videos. <laughs> so we actually have a video that shows you how we compost all of this stuff year round at our facility. So I'm gonna play that one next. All right, 
So this one doesn't have a super fun <laughs> voiceover, so I'll kind of just chat over it. But basically, we're going to show you the process of how we turn um, fruit and vegetable proteins, dairies, grains, all those things into soil. So we need two different kinds of materials in order to do that. We need greens and browns. So greens are like a nitrogen abundant, very gassy, smelly. Those are the things that stink when they break down. That's a green material. We take green materials like this one. Doesn't it just look delicious? <laughs> um, and we pour it into a mixer. It takes very little amount of green to brown. So it's a, it's a, a kind of wide ratio there of one to 25. So we would have one part of the really stinky, smelly stuff and 25 parts of browns like paper towel, newspaper, yard clipping, wood chips, anything like that that's gonna have a high oxygen level. And we're gonna mix it in at a rate of that 25 to one in that mixer and get it really, really mixed. The reason it's so important to mix the different types of material in compost is because the brown material is what provides oxygen to the pile. Once it's mixed and it looks like this, we put it into one of our eight bunkers here and we cover that with something called a gore cover. Now in the bottom of these, you'll see there are panels of holes that push oxygen up through this pile the entire time it's sitting there. It also helps regulate the temperature so that we can do this even in minus 50. After it's been in there, we actually pull it out and we turn it over every four to six weeks. We trommel it to make sure we get all the larger chunks that aren't breaking down as fast. And then we leave it out usually under the sun for a few weeks to make sure that it is fully cured. So we go from gross, rotten, smelly <laughs> strawberries and old pizza crusts and chicken wings and bones into a usable soil product in as little as 13 weeks. Like it's so fast. It's so cool. We're really proud of this facility and you know, Obviously we would love to give tours of it someday, but it is not the nicest smelling place on earth. So just be thankful that this video did not have smell-o-vision because it's pretty ripe out there, but it's worth it. So when things aren't recyclable and they aren't compostable, sometimes things do need to go to a landfill. Like I said before, if we send this little head of lettuce to a landfill, it's gonna be sitting out there for 25 years years. All right, so what I have here is a picture of what's called a transfer station. It's essentially what you would see if you went to a landfill um, with a giant pile of stinky garbage behind it. <laughs> this is the nice part of the landfill. This is where you get to go as a customer for things that really just have to get thrown out, like a really old mattress or an old refrigerator, or just things that really truly are at the end of their life. Um, and yeah, so basically this is kind of where it goes. This is the friendly version of it, um, but essentially it gets put into an environmentally safe uh, landfill, which is protecting both the earth underneath it and above it. We work really hard to have a landfill that is so protective of the environment around it. Um, we do a lot of different things uh, that really bring us up to a higher standard in our landfill that we're super proud of. So um, rest assured, if your garbage, you know, if you actually have to have garbage and things and it comes to us, it's definitely going somewhere that isn't going to be harmful to the environment. Okay, but what about all those other things that are recyclable, but they can't go in your blue bin, right? If we're doing Think Smart five in the cart or four, you know, no glass if you're outside of Saskatoon. If you're doing those Think Smart categories, there's a lot of things here that can be recycled that can't go in your bin. So we have to kind of talk about what to do with those. Batteries, bikes, clothing, furniture, appliances, paint. There are so many things that can be recycled that we cannot recycle here at Loris. Mostly for safety reasons um, and also just processing wise, they're just not things that fit into our program. So um, one thing that I really like to encourage, especially with classrooms is Upcycling. Upcycling is basically a craft that's good for the environment. Who doesn't want to do that? So I made another really short video on how you could turn something as simple as a t-shirt into a tote bag. Let's turn a t-shirt into a tote bag. First 
turn your t-shirts inside out. Mark where you're gonna make your cuts along the bottom, cut strips along the bottom, tie them in knots, then cut off the sleeves, cut out the collar, and voila, a brand new washable tote bag. It is seriously that easy to take an old t-shirt that you're not wearing and turn it into a tote bag that you can also wash in between grocery trips. This is something that's so simple to do. It doesn't require sewing. It doesn't require a ton of materials. It's something you could easily do in your classroom, maybe as a way to celebrate Earth Day together with an old shirt that maybe has a stain on it or something like that, that you wouldn't wear every day. So with upcycling, um, the limit is your imagination. So go wild with it, come up with some ideas, and I'm sure your class is gonna find some really cool ways to upcycle. For things that can't be upcycled, like batteries or electronics or paint, um, we have some amazing partners here in Saskatoon and around Saskatoon that I always love to share because I know, and we here at Loris know, recycling is not a one person job. It takes a lot of us um, to make sure recycling is done well in this province. So first up is the Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Council. Um, they have an amazing website. It's essentially Google for recycling. You can type in there where you live, what you want to recycle and it'll tell you everywhere you can take it for recycling and now they have a new feature that even tells you where you can take it for like donating or reusing or repurposing so really you know what this this facility these people are amazing because they're making sure that even less stuff goes to the landfill every day then there's electronics um electronics are massive i am talking to you through like a dozen electronics right now all 132 of your classrooms are using electronics to see me. I'm sure you have cell phones and tablets and vehicles and all sorts of stuff that have electronics in them. Um, they can all be safely and efficiently recycled and they should be. Um, so when you're done with an electronic, please, please take it to one of these drop-offs. Um, we have one at our landfill at our transfer station, actually at all of our transfer stations. Um, and then my other kind of best way to find one is that Essentially, if you're buying an electronic somewhere, they're most likely gonna have one of these drop-offs at that same store. Um, you can go to their website or you can use the SWRCs um, to find where to take those electronics. And then lastly, if you live in Saskatoon, we have the most amazing app. We have a wizard that you can download on your phone, an actual wizard, and he will help you do all of your recycling. He'll remind you when to put your card out. He's really just the best, so I definitely suggest you get that app on your phone or your tablet if possible. Okay, I just put those links to all of the great resources that Alexa just talked about into the chat there. So for the Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Council, there's a link to their website for the EPRA for recycling electronics. There's a link to their website there, as well as the Waste Wizard just on the saskatoon.ca website. Um, but also great for Alexa for talking about that app as well. It's very, very handy to use. So that kind of concludes the major learning part of today's program, which I hope you learned a lot. That was a lot of information to take in, and I am so appreciative of you all being here. I want to remind you of a couple things. Um, we have a poster contest going on. I should have brought them over to my desk, but I am staring at a massive pile of posters that we have already received. There are some really cool drawings in there. Um, I'm looking forward to going through them and picking a winner. Um, but maybe you learned something here today that you want to represent in a poster. I'd love to see it. Uh, they're due this Friday. You'll just drop them off here at my office at Loris Recycle. If you come after hours, there's a mail slot you can put them through. Um, but essentially, end of day Friday, if you can get them to us, that would be great. And the winning posters classroom will get a pizza party. Um, so we're really looking forward to providing that pizza lunch to a lucky winner's classroom and to go through uh, all these posters. Obviously, this one is adorable. It came to us last year. It was one of our winners. Um, so yeah, we really look forward to seeing those. Thank you, thank you, thank you all so much for coming today. It is so humbling for us to see such an interest in recycling and composting education for your students. It's so important for us to learn and to spread these positive messages about recycling and composting and protecting the earth and how fun it has been to sit here and celebrate and just watch all of these questions come through. So I am gonna open it up for some questions. And um, yeah, I think I'll let Loren kind of facilitate which ones she wants answered first. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to put any questions in now, it's not too late. If you'd love to say, you know, your student's name, the grade and teacher, we can absolutely give a shout out. 
um, yeah, so let's do some questions. Speaking of shout outs, I had promised to give a shout out to my cousin's class. So Rob and Holati's class and Ernst Linder. Hi, everybody. And I hope you're behaving and I hope you've got some great questions for us. So uh, there we go. Uh, first question. We have uh, so many great questions. Remember to throw those in the Q&A. We're happy to answer them there. We've had a couple come through the chat. I'm trying to filter both of those. Um, so we'll hopefully get to everybody's questions here, but thank you so much for already bringing in so many awesome questions. Uh, let's start right off the top. Can bricks be recycled? Bricks. Oof. Mm. I, I'm going to have to say no, um, because they are basically like cement. So there's not really a lot you could do with them. However, I am already thinking of like 10 different crafts that you could do with bricks. So I would definitely think more of upcycling when it comes to those. Great answer. Uh, if plastic is not rigid, but it has a number four in the recycling symbol on it, can it go in the cart? So if I've got a bag of stretchy plastic and it's got a number four symbol on it, can I put it in the blue bin? Mm, that's a no. And that's a really good question. So if it crinkles or stretches, mm -mm, cannot be recycled. Um, what I'm going to say about that is if you think about it and it's so thin, if you melted it down to make it into something new, it would kind of just disintegrate. The reason that they have that symbol and the number on it, though, is to show you likely what kind of plastic it was made of or recycled from. So sometimes it's kind of a good thing if they have that on there um, to show you that it's made from recycled material, but sadly, it cannot be recycled again. Awesome. And so do, does Loris plan on taking uh, stretchy plastic in the future? That's another question that we've had here. So for us, the reason we either do or don't take a material is based on whether or not recycling factories around the world, predominantly in Canada, can actually recycle that material. So it's not necessarily up to us to decide whether or not we can recycle it. It's whether or not there's somewhere that we can actually send it for recycling. So if someone comes up with a billion dollar idea on how to recycle plastic bags, of course we'd start collecting them again. But right now there's just no one who can recycle them. Great answer, Alexa. And thanks for these questions. They're really, really great. Uh, one question that's come through, how long does it take for garbage to break down into tiny little pieces? Mm, that's a good question. So something like a piece of plastic that ended up in a landfill, you're looking at about a hundred or even sometimes up to a thousand years, depending on how thick that plastic is. Um, if it's something like metal, I mean, I can't even predict that. It would be thousands of years that it's gonna sit in a landfill. And, and like you said, it's gonna just break down into tiny little pieces. It'll never turn back into an organic material, which is ultimately what's like worst for the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexa, do we take styrofoam? Oof, no, sadly we do not. Um, when styrofoam goes in the back of our trucks, when we collect it, we have to compact everything. And then it kind of just turns into styro snow and it goes everywhere and it cannot be collected or recycled. Um, I know that there are some styrofoam recycling facilities in the US, and I believe if you take styrofoam to London Drugs, they actually have a direct line to send it right there. Um, so it's not getting compacted, it's not getting turned into styro snow. So if you, you know, you and your family and you know you're going to London Drugs in the next little while, and you've had some takeout containers you want to recycle, you could take them with you. You could probably also use that SWRC website to look up other places you could take it. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder for people, make sure you're using that Q&A box. Uh, we've got so many great questions coming in. This is wonderful. Um, what happens to non-clean recycling when it comes in a blue bin or it comes in um, to our facility? Where does it go? What happens with it? So if something comes here that's not clean, it has to go in the garbage. Uh, if we had to take all 150 tons of the recycling and rinse them under the tap all day <laughs> um, to clean them out, we'd never get any recycling done. And usually once it's come here dirty, it's already com contaminated and ruined everything it's touched. So it often ends up sending other good, clean recycling to the garbage, which is really sad when it happens because all of your good efforts may go to waste because a neighbor or someone you know isn't respecting the recycling program. So if you see someone 
putting dirty stuff in their garbage or in their recycling, you're welcome to tell them what you learned. <laughs> Okay, we've got a couple of requests for this and they kind of, I'm gonna group them all into the same thing of what's some of the weirdest or some of the coolest things that we've seen throughout um, our years, I guess, working at Loris come through the facility. Um, so I'll let you take that one, but I'll say one of the weirdest ones that I've seen is a, uh, and this might be not really applicable for the majority of the people here, but there was a driver's license for Elvis Presley. And if you don't know who that is, ask your parents, but it was very strange to see. Yeah, and when we see something like a driver's license, we always pull it off the line um, and we try to contact the person like, hey, we found your license. And the staff member who found that one didn't realize who it was and brought it down and was like, can you call him? We're like, oh, he's left the building. Like, yeah. we can't call him. <laughs> um, I think the funniest, weirdest thing I ever have seen um, was actually a set of bowling balls um they're so loud and they're so heavy and when they hit the drum feeder when they got here it honestly sounded like an explosion it was so loud and to see us have to shut everything down and go down into the feeder and figure out what it was i think it was like three or four massive bowling balls um i think those have definitely been the weirdest one like whoever thought that the recycling cart was the right place for that i'm really not sure yeah uh, we've got a couple of questions about compost. First of all, if we want to compost, but we don't have a green bin, how do we do it? Secondly, if we want a green bin, how do we do it? Right. And, uh, and third, well, I'll let you answer those two. And then I've got another one following up about compost. Um, so if you live in Saskatoon, there is a green cart program. It's not our program. So it's not as inclusive with like meat and, and dairy and stuff like that. But you can still put some food scraps in there as long as and you're like kind of yard. Uh, waste as well. So definitely you would just go to the city of Saskatoon's website to get one. Um, if you live outside of Saskatoon, um, I think we serve like over 60 municipalities with our green carts. So uh, I'm like Warman and Martinsville definitely have ours like Osler, Dalmany, all those kind of places. They definitely have them as well. And some of them are subscription based. So you would just have to call your town office and say, hey, I'd like a green cart. If you live somewhere that just absolutely doesn't have access to any kind of green cart program. Um, you could go to a place like a farm and garden center and buy yourself a compost bin to put all your stuff into. They have some really cool ones that you can actually turn that are like a drum. So you're constantly mixing the materials, something like that you could use in your backyard really easily. Excellent. Now, question for you uh, that came in how long does it take for a glass bottle to break down in a compost bin? So glass is actually not accepted in the compost. Glass will not break down. And I can't imagine some poor gardener going to dig through their compost and finding a bunch of broken glass. Like, ah, that's so scary. So please don't ever put glass in the compost because it is not a compostable item because it cannot be oxygenated, right? It has to have oxygen pushed through it in order for it to break down. And you can't do that with glass. Cassidy Alm was asked, how long does it take you to break down uh, a bone in compost? So eight to 13 weeks. If it comes to a commercial composting facility, eight <clears throat> to 13 weeks. You can't do that in the average backyard composter because there's not enough heat being trapped in the pile. Perfect. Uh, we've got Jocelyn Foster who's asked, can you recycle wax paper and aluminum foil? Uh, aluminum foil, yes. Wax paper, I'm going to say no um, in excessive amounts because it does have that wax coating on it. So anything that you could like take your thumb and scrape something off of it, it's been coated and that is not a recyclable material. But I do believe you could compost it. Um, we would just have to kind of double check depending on who makes the wax paper. Some people make a compostable one, um, but not all wax papers are. So it kind of depends on which one you buy. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens with the money raised from recycled materials that go to Sarcan? Um, that's probably one of the few ways that recycling makes money. <laughs> um, uh, recycling has not been a profitable thing for a really long time. The margins are so low. The markets are so small. Um, recycling isn't something that is being like championed uh, as much by the government, I think, as we wish it was. If you are somebody who's making materials out of plastic, there are actually like more incentives to use virgin plastic than there are to use recycled material. Um, so 
you know what, we're, we're still shipping, we're still making, we're still doing, but it's definitely not something that makes a ton of money. So I think our partnership with Sarkan is something we're like, obviously so happy about because those are government funded uh, deposits. So that's something that the government is um, kind of enforcing, which is great. So any of those things that we can use that are part of those government programs are, are huge for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a question that came in. Can you compost beans? Beans fall under that fruit and vegetable scrap. So yes, absolutely. You should be eating them, but if they've gone bad, yes, you can like compost beans. Scooping them into your shoes and dumping them in the compost pile when your parents aren't looking, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another question has come in. How do you recycle things like a bike or batteries? Those are great. So um, bikes, I believe it's still happening at the landfill, the city's landfill right now. They just reopened again for the year. Um, I think it's called the Bridge City Bicycle Co-op. I'm pretty sure. Um, and you can take them there. So if they're totally broken down and not usable, they can part them out and use the parts to fix other bikes. Or if they are in good use, um, they can find somebody who really needs a bike and they, and they can help them with that. Um, batteries, uh, Sarcan, most electronic stores and then any kind of EPRA drop-off. Um, batteries, when they come to us by mistake, is a huge problem. Um, those can cause fires, those can hurt our staff. So we definitely wanna make sure batteries are going to the right place. If you're ever unsure, use that SWRC website or the Waste Wizard app and they will tell you where to take them. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so Dylan would like to know if Loris is in support of electric vehicles. I mean, I don't see why not. I know we've actually had discussions at looking at electric collection trucks. Mm -hmm. um, can you imagine, you know, but I think that the issue for us is that we run into that our drivers have about 10 hour shifts. Like, is there going to be an electronic truck that has enough power to power the arm for collection and last for 10 hours of driving? So mm -hmm. it's definitely something we're looking into in the future for sure. We're just waiting for the vehicles to kind of catch up to the needs that we have. Um, Another problem for us with that too is uh, with how cold Saskatoon can get with those electronic trucks for the size of the trucks that we would use. It's really hard on the batteries when it gets that cold. So that's another factor, but it would definitely do look into it as a potential option. I think everybody who looks at the gas prices today is kind of like, hmm, it would be nice. So um, definitely a great, really great question here. Uh, thanks, Dylan. Um, we um, have about two minutes left, and I know a lot of you are probably gearing up for recess. So I'll have Loren pick a few more questions, but I want to thank you all for sending so many. There are so many great ones. Uh, okay, quick question. Can items that have more than one material in them, like a pair of scissors, be recycled? Hmm. So a pair of scissors is a no, um, unfortunately, but those are called mixed materials. If you can separate the materials, like uh, a coffee tin with metal in the bottom and cardboard in the middle, yes. But if you put them in as one, no. Uh, okay, excellent. So another quick question here. Um, our, uh, let's ask about the poster contest. Can we mail in the posters if you live outside of Saskatoon? Yeah, I, I would think so. Yeah, as long as they are kind of getting here early next week while we're still judging them, we would definitely be okay with that. Or if you wanted to scan them and email them to us, um, you'll get a follow-up email from us with our email that you can contact us at just to make mm -hmm. sure they make it by the deadline. That would work as well. Other question came in. Could a fishing net be upcycled into something else? Absolutely. Oh, and what yeah. a great... Uh, idea and a great medium to try and make it into a cool craft. Like, I would, I would love to see what your class could come up with with an old fishing net and turn it into something amazing. I feel already like a cute produce bag. Like you see those netted produce bags everywhere. I think that would be awesome. So we have one minute left. I just want to say one more time. Thank you all so much for coming. This was so much fun. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. I hope your students were engaged. You'll get a follow-up email with a little survey. If you want to provide any feedback, we would love to hear it. If you want to book a tour, you can still book virtual tours with me, or in the fall, you can come here in person and you can have a tour. There's going to be all that kind of information coming to you in an email shortly after we finish. Um, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Loren, for helping with all the questions because there were so many of them. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for celebrating Earth Day with us. Thank you so much, everybody. I know that we didn't get to all of your questions, but if you want to reach out to us and ask us or follow us on social media and send them that way, we would be happy to go through the questions and answer them. You send them all as a class to us and we can reach out to you. 
Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, everybody.